Yes, it's really exciting. It's in St. Pete. It is in St. Pete. And uh, uh, I know uh, both Barbara and a couple others mentioned uh, our miracle service. We had a ton of healings. You know, the Lord just said, um, you don't have to wait for a special sense or a special feeling. He's just like, get up the healings in the room. Let's just get everybody healed. And we, we had a ton of healings. And it was a lot of fun just to watch. And, you know, some you can't tell until... Um, you know, a test is run or this is done, but uh, it was fun to just watch the watch God do what He does and what He does so well, and that's take care of us. Amen. Okay, so today we're going to talk about taking territory. Yes, somebody wants to take territory with me today, Anne. <laughs> but you know what's fun is we are made to take territory, and I'm going to kind of do like a broad little sweep. And then we're going to uh, drill down into specifically what I want to talk to us about. But, you know, we all understand, and I gave Noah all the scriptures ahead of time so, so um, he could get them all ready for me. But we're actually going to go to John 3. And we're going to do just a little basic thought process on uh, how we become territory takers. And we're going to start in verse 5. But, you know, each of us were born into the world. That was our place where God put us. He put us on this earth, in this world. But when we are born again, we are no longer of this world. We are of the kingdom. We just happen to have our feet on this earth, but we are people of the kingdom. That's who we belong to. That's where our territory is. We have been given the kingdom territory. And I just want to read John 3, 5 through 7. It says, Jesus answered, he's been talking to Nicodemus, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot ever enter the kingdom of God. So when we're born on this earth, we are not born of water and the spirit. We're born of flesh and we dwell on this earth. When we are born of water and spirit, we are no longer part of the earth kingdom. We're part of God's kingdom. Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, right? That's what we just said. The physical is merely physical. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So do not be surprised that I've told you, you must be born again, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and sanctified. Okay, so that's who we are. We who have been born again are people of the kingdom. And what we have to understand in this is we are the sent ones from the kingdom. When we're sent out, we're not sent out from a worldview. We are sent out from a kingdom view. So wherever God sends us, we see through this perspective of kingdom eyes, not world eyes. And we are slowly being transformed into a clearer picture day by day. But everywhere we're sent, we're sent to uh, release the kingdom of God from us to wherever we are. Because the kingdom of God is, comes out of us because the kingdom lives within us. Okay? I might need an amen or two this morning. Matt, my screaming guy's gone today, so, you know. <laughs> and I, I want us to really think about that because sometimes we wrestle between being people who live in a world and people who are born of the kingdom. It is a wrestling because what we're seeing with our natural eyes is the world in front of us, the world problems, the world challenges, the world this, the world that. But what God wants us to see is the kingdom perspective so we can see the kingdom solution, the kingdom authority, the kingdom power that we bring into a room. So that is what we're supposed to do. And I want to read this little quote. It's from a book from uh, Peter Wagner. Do you guys know who Peter Wagner is? And he wrote this book called... Uh, Apostles, Prophets, and the Coming Move of God. But this kind of sums up what I'm talking about, and then we'll move on. It says, Jesus was the glory of God manifested on this earth. Agree? 
the church, that is us, is the glory of Christ Jesus being manifested on this earth. Because Christ in us, that's, that, that's how it works. That, and it says that glory will be known, made known by the church uh, throughout the endless... Uh, wait a minute, I just lost my... Lost my piece of paper here. Throughout the endlessness of eternity. So glory means that we as the church, we are the personification of Christ to others. Christ lives in us. We are to display who Christ is to the people that we encounter. That is what the church does. That we portray his presence. So when we go places, we are releasing the presence of God from us to other people. That we manifest his character, his righteousness, his holiness, his purity, you know, we, his healing power. We manifest who he is. We perform his purpose. His purpose is to draw others into the heart of God. And we are manifestors of that purpose. And we are the revelation to others of his grace and his goodness and his greatness. Because we are the church that displays the glory of God through Christ Jesus. That's who we are. And that's where we have to stay in that understanding of, I am no longer a citizen of this earth I am a citizen of the kingdom who just happened to be stationed on the earth until the time I am stationed in eternity forever. So we are the glory of Christ displayed on this earth, the church is. That's who we are. Now that's a powerful word for us. And it says it all through the word, but sometimes when you really kind of drill it down and you think about, okay, so, you know, Jesus says, him and the Father are having that discussion on John 17, and he says, he says to the Father, the glory that you've given to me, I've given to them. So, so that we can go out and display his glory. We can display his character. We can display his power. We can display his authority. And Territory everywhere we go, everywhere we go. And we don't take the territory through battle the way they used to. You know, we don't have our army with guns and knives and machine guns and all that. I mean, that's a whole different battle, but we're just going to, we're going to talk about the church right now. We take the territory by capturing the hearts of men and women. That's how we take the territory. Because you know that when you got saved, when I got saved, then it affected everyone around me. When, when, when someone helped me find the heart of God for me and see Jesus as Savior, then my life changed and everyone around me was affected by it. Now, they could have been affected and decided not to be my friend anymore, or they could have been affected and, and decided to join in the curiosity with me. But that is not our decision. That's their decision. But when we're changed, we have a sphere of influence that is changed with us because everything we do is transformed because we're no longer of the world. We are of Christ. So our character becomes transformed. Our actions become transformed. Our decisions become transformed. It says that we go from glory to glory in that transformation of Christ. And everyone around us is affected by what Christ has done in us. And that is how we take the territory for the kingdom of God. Everyone is affected. So when we speak out of our authority, it releases the power of Christ into that situation. Whether it's the power to stop the enemy, whether it's the power to stop 
the oppression in sickness, whatever it is, we are given the authority when we become part of the kingdom to, to transform the territory that God set in front of us. He said to Joshua, everywhere your foot steps, you will take. That word is for us. Everywhere we go, we have the power to take the territory. And part of that is just understanding. You know, sometimes when we're taking a territory, we don't even know what we're doing. We don't realize that what we've said, like you've had the opportunity to pray over that teacher, we don't realize what we've said has actually taken the territory and released the oppression of the enemy against that person. So our words, our words, our authority releases the power of Christ into a situation. So let's turn to Acts 3. I read a little bit of this on Thursday night, and I want to read through it again. Because when we take territory, we're all, we are taking the physical by dislodging the enemy's hold in the spiritual. So when we take territory, we are taking a physical ground by dislodging the enemy's hold in the spiritual. So Acts 3, and I'm going to start in, um, oh, I'm not even there. I'm still on John. I'm like, I already read that. Come on, keep up with me. Keep up with myself. Okay, verse 1. It says, Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the, at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man who'd been unable to walk from birth was carried along, whom they used to, uh, to set down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, so that he would beg alms for those entering the temple. So this man has not walked since birth. Like I said, I shared this a little bit, but I want to talk about it in a little different perspective. When Peter and John were about to go in the temple, he began asking them for coins. But Peter, along with John, stared at him intently and said, look at us. And the man began to pay attention to them, eagerly expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, silver and gold I have not. But what I do have I give to you in the name of The authority and power of Jesus Christ of the Nazarene begin now to walk and go on walking. Then he seized the man's right hand with a firm grip, raised him up, and at once his feet and ankles became strong and steady. So Peter's words, his authority, released the power, the dunamis, the dynamite of God to heal this person. And not only was that person free from the oppression of the enemy, he also, verse 9 says, all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they recognized him as the very man who usually sat begging for coins at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement and were mystified at what had happened to him. So not only did Peter's authority released the power of Christ into this man's life, it also displayed the wonder of God for all to see. And that territory was taken for the kingdom of God. So you think sometimes that one little thing we said doesn't make that much difference. But that thing that we said, the thing that we did that brought the kingdom into the world system actually broke the stronghold of the enemy over that in order for the man to be healed, for people to encounter the wonder of who Christ is, and for a territory to be taken. And that's what we need. We need to understand wherever God sends us, if it's not already kingdom territory, it's going to be kingdom territory because we're kingdom people that carry the kingdom authority that release the power to take the territory. Everywhere we go is an opportunity for territory. And if you don't think the enemy wants to come against what is happening, 
He does. We had, we had two situations this week. One, we had this incredible uh, time of prayer and deliverance for someone, this victory that was like no victory. I mean, it was powerful. They walked away freed. The enemy had been dislodged. Uh, it was awesome. We did our due diligence. We prayed. We cleansed. Da, 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 da. We did all that. Everything was fine. Now, you would think that the bigger blowback would come after that kind of deliverance. But actually, it came after the healing service several days later. So we had the healing service on Friday night, on Thursday night. So Friday morning, it wasn't a full front attack on someone that was involved in the healing service. It was a subtle, um, what, what's that word I want to use? It was this subtle taunt of the enemy that started them down a path that had nothing to do with, with the number of people that got healed that night. But it had everything to do with being attacked at their very kingdom base. I know. And they didn't even realize it. I'm talking to them on the phone and they're like, you know, they're telling me all this and they're, they're having a meltdown and they are crying. And I'm like, you know that it was the enemy's attack against you because what happened the previous night? So he wants to steal the joy of that victory and the territory that was taken by working on and getting you discouraged, attacking the very identity of who you are, going after the very anointing that you had this incredible breakthrough in for other people. So you begin to start spinning on the enemy's treadmill. And it takes one another for us to recognize it. You know, sometimes when something's happened to us that is so subtle and deceptive, we don't even realize that that's the enemy's retribution against us. Even though we've had different victories and there was no retribution. So, you know, the enemy, we just have to stay on our, our, our um, stay on alert and stay on alert with one another because... We are dislodging, displacing, destroying the works of the enemy. That's what we're doing. And, and he has, and his minions are trying any way they can to make us think, did that really make a difference? Am I really where I'm supposed to be? You know, I'm not sure they really need me there. Anybody could do it. You know, to really get us un, uh, un, um, anchored from the call that God has given us. And that's why the body has to stay together. And any time we have a victory, we need to make sure that we have covered ourselves in protection and invited others to pray for us. You know, sometimes we think, oh, we're good. We don't need any prayer. I, I may not know what I need. Just pray for me. That's all I care about. You know, we may not know. We may not be able to put our finger on it, but just pray for us because and one another because that's where the enemy gets in. When we get that little bit of guard down, next thing we know, the enemy has slipped in with his lies and his taunt. And what he does, he hits you where you're a little bit vulnerable. And whatever that vulnerability is, that's where he tries to hit you. So that was just a little, you know, extra stuff for us today. Okay, we're going to turn to Acts 13. We're going to start in verse 8. Because we're looking at this in two different ways. We're going to look at this like we just talked about the man who was uh, um, crippled from birth. And he was freed From that spirit of infirmity against him. By the words and the power. This is about Paul. And he's out on his, one of his missionary journeys. And like I said, we're going to start in uh, verse 8. And it says, But Alumas the sorcerer 
for that was how his name was translated, opposed them, trying to turn the proconsul away from accepting faith. Now, of course, that is the enemy's job. He, if, if there's someone who's on the edge of yes to Christ, the enemy's going to do everything he can to make him say no, to put in that doubt, to put in that uncertainty. But Paul, who is also known as, uh, but Saul, who is also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit and led by him, looked steadily into Alumus's at Elumas, and he said, you who are full of every kind of deceit and every kind of fraud, you son of the devil, enemy of everything, that is right and good. Will you never stop perverting the straight paths of the Lord? I want you guys to think about that. Now, he is filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come over him. It doesn't mean he doesn't have any control over what he says. But he's saying what the Holy Spirit has given him to say. Now, remember, this person is a sorcerer. Their partnership with the enemy is all about witchcraft. It's all about spells. It's all about curses. It's all about those things. And Paul says, you, son of the devil. Can you imagine looking at someone and saying that? You can by the Spirit if the Spirit guides you that way, right? Verse 11, it says, now watch, the hand of the Lord is on you, and you will be blind. So blind that you will be unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately, a mist and darkness fell upon him, and he groped around seeking people to lead him by the hand. The authority from Paul's mouth Release the power of God to stop the sorcerer from interfering with the works of God. Amen. God's power bound the enemy's use of this person that was trying to prevent the gospel from going forward. Now, we don't usually go around when someone's getting in our way and say, blind, deaf, out of control. But what God is showing us, there's two things, I think. First of all, there is authority that we walk in as kingdom people. And we, we are good stewards of that authority. There's power that comes out of our mouth that joins that authority that releases the move of God. But we also know that there are people that will come in our path that have made agreement with the enemy that they have decided that their master is the master of darkness, that their master is, is the master that's going to try to circumvent the plan of God, which we know that the enemy cannot circumvent the plan of God. But we have to understand that we are kingdom movers. Our job is to influence the world Take the territory for the kingdom of God. And sometimes that comes with a word that releases power that stops the enemy in his tracks in human form. And that is a pretty daunting thought process, isn't it? It's a pretty daunting thought process. But, you know, I was thinking about when Paul was blinded on the road to Emmaus. And, you know, part of spiritual blindness in this, in this part of this blindness, um, when you see it in Scripture, it's because there's a lack of spiritual receptivity to the Word of God. When you think about when Paul was blind on the road of Demaeus, he was releasing the Word of God, but he was coming against Christ, the Son of God, against that being released in the world. And what happened? God blinded him. And as he was blinded, he began to follow the people that were leading him and hearing the word of God. And he was transformed and said, yes, Jesus is the Savior. Yes, I will follow him. 
But this one, it doesn't say that out of his blindness came light. Out of his blindness came the revelation that the master of darkness that he served was a counterfeit of the master of light that was being released in that arena. And once he went blind, verse 12 says, the pro believed the message of salvation when he saw what had happened, being astonished at the teaching concerning the Lord. So his, the, his blindness brought salvation to someone else. It's interesting to think about it that way, isn't it? It's interesting to think about in our uh, world of political correctness, excessive acceptance. Sometimes we have a hard time identifying who is just being oppressed by the enemy and who's being in partnership with the enemy. Because we're trying to be nice to everybody. And it's not about being mean or nice. It's about having the discernment of the Holy Spirit, that authority to understand who, who is this person and who is guiding them. Are they oppressed by the enemy? Are they actually in partnership with the enemy? Both can have freedom, but there has to be a choice on both sides. So... Interesting. It's it's a it's a uh, uh, a grave responsibility we carry. Advancing the kingdom with the authority and the power that dwells in us. Grave responsibility. Okay, we're going to go to one other place. Second Kings thirteen. That was the big picture. This is going to be a little bit more of the minute, the smaller drill down. Let's get this into our lives. So 2 Kings 13, Elisha is about to die. He's sick and he's about to die. We're starting in verse 14. So he's sick, he's about to die. We have uh, King Joash is the king of Israel. And he comes down and he's upset that Elisha is about to die. I mean, we'd be, you know, he's like, this is the one who keeps me connected to God. Uh, the verse says, and this is the same, this is the same words that Elisha said when Elijah was being caught up in the uh, whirlwind of God. He said, oh, father, uh, oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. And that's what Elisha said when Elijah was going up. So that's how King Joash saw Elisha as a father to him, as a, as a voice, as a prophet from God to him. So Elisha says to him, take bows and arrows. So he took a bow and arrows. And he said to him, so Elisha puts his hands on the king's hands, on the bows and arrows. There is a, a impartation from Elisha over what he's about to call him to do. He's about to give him the instructions of God for a prophetic act that he will do that will ensure victory for him. You know, part of our kingdom taking is being able to hear from God and declare and prophesy into the territory we're about to step on. Amen. You know, we have to be able to understand and see or understand, discern where God is sending us so we can begin to pray into it and declare what God has shown us for this territory. So he tells him, he says, open the window to the east. And he tells him to shoot an arrow out of the window from the east uh, towards Syria. And the reason he told them that, because Syria had taken that part of the land from Israel. They had invaded that part of the land. So Elisha is telling the king, shoot the arrow that way because you're going to get victory and take that back from them. So it was a prophetic act. You know that that one arrow didn't destroy all the, all the enemy against them. And all of a sudden they ran back and gave him the land. It was a prophetic act in order to set the spiritual motion of taking that land. Sometimes we have to set that spiritual motion 
in, in, um, on its wheels, get it going. So he's shooting this, and he shoots it. He does it. So he did good. So, he, so Elisha says, you're going to have victory, so don't worry about it. Oh, I was just looking to see which one we were on. He said, you're going to have victory. But in verse 18, he says, then he said, take the arrows. And he took them. And Elisha said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. And he struck it three times and stopped. That sounds like plenty to me. But verse 19 says, so the man of God was angry with him. And said, you should have struck five or six times. And you would have struck them down. You would have destroyed them. Right now, you're just going to have many victories. They, the enemy will not be destroyed before you. Because you didn't press in to the fullness that God had for you. God had the fullness of destruction over the enemy so they could have their territory. But he only struck it three times. And, you know, part of our reasoning as people were like, well, how was he supposed to know? How was he supposed to know he's supposed to strike it five or six times? And uh, but I was praying about it. You know, I've been thinking about it a lot. And what I sense from the Lord is we have to continue to strike until we feel the Holy Spirit break through for us. Right. You know, sometimes... We strike and we feel like, oh, that's, that's good. You know, we feel okay, you know. But we have to continue to strike the ground until we feel the power of the Holy Spirit break through for us. And we know the difference when it just feels fine and it just feels like power. There is a whole different sensation when the power of the Holy Spirit begins to break through for us. And, you know, sometimes it's easier to stop short instead of pressing into the fullness that God has for us. And even though this was a prophetic act, the power of the Holy Spirit moves us in those prophetic acts. We know, even I noticed when we were doing that, what was that last song we sang, Caitlin? Um, yeah, I was all thinking, yeah. Did you sense the shift? You know, we could have sang the first chorus, the verse, you know, once or twice. It would have been fine. Out of our mouths came the direct declaration, I exalt you, God. I exalt you, God. Would have been fine. But did you notice the more we pressed in, the more power came with the, the uh, declaration from our mouths until there was a shift in all of our hearts and all of our voices in the way we felt that breakthrough by the Holy Spirit was for each of us. And we have to battle for that sometimes. You know, um, I'll just, I'll just say this because every, no one knows what goes on before a service starts on a Sunday morning, right? So we've got two people sick that ca just called this morning, the drummer and the other guitarist. Uh, we had uh, a couple other things. Caitlin had to get her guitar brought from her mom. You know, she got here like right before we started. So no one knows all the stuff that you go through to, to get a service started. You know, the copier doesn't work or the keys are printed in A and they were supposed to be in C, whatever it is. But, it, but it's enough to cause a little bit of chaos in the house, right? But there's something about... Just continue to press through until you feel the breakthrough of the Holy Spirit. That, you know, halfway through the chaos, I could have said, never mind, let's just turn on some videos and we'll just be fine from there. But it's that willingness to press through regardless of what it looks like. That's how we take a territory. That's how we took a territory of chaos this morning. As we continued to press and then we felt the release of the Holy Spirit and, and they didn't even need to play anymore. Everybody was in their own worship. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. Just make some space for God to move. But it's hard sometimes. 
you know, it's hard sometimes when you feel like, okay, I've, I've hit about all I can hit. And, and God's just like, but did you feel my presence on it? Did you feel my presence on it? And that's what Elisha was trying to teach the king. He's trying to teach him. Yeah, three is fine. And for a king, he probably had, you know, that's probably not his thing, striking out arrows and that type of thing. He usually has somebody else do it for him. So he's like, okay, well, let me get off my throne and come down here and strike a few arrows. But, but God is wanting us to understand the power of the kingdom that rests within us. And the partnership of the Holy Spirit so we can sense that breakthrough for the territory that he's given us to take. And so we're going we're gonna to do a little breaking through of territory because I know that there's territory for each one of us that has been a little bit of a battle. And we feel like we've done all we needed to do. But is God asking us to press in a little harder until we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit break that ground for us. So does anybody want to stand up and join me in this? So where do you need the Holy Spirit to, pre- to break through for you, to break that ground for you? in order to take the territory that you're going after. Where do you need it? You don't have to say it out loud, but everybody has a place that they've been contending for, that they've been battling for. And and God is asking us to use this um, biblical story of striking the ground until we have a breakthrough. And we're going to strike the ground uh, for a few minutes. Until you feel that breakthrough. Uh, And I know it may seem strange and it may seem awkward, but there's power in unity. There's power in that prophetic act for all of us. So wherever it is, I want you to just close your eyes and begin. Just take your hand up and hit it down. Up and down. Up and down. And what you're doing is you're striking the ground and you're asking the Holy Spirit just to show you and give you that indication when he's got that, that ground broken for you so you can take that territory. Come on, God. I need a little music. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. It may be healing, it may be a breakthrough in your business, it may be a breakthrough with your children, it may be a breakthrough in that next step that you know God's calling you to. You need to move out from your row so you've got some room to flail that arm. Thank you, Jesus. It may be finances. Maybe staffing, maybe closing a job, switching to a new job. I thank you, Lord God, for a release of boldness over your people right now. In Jesus' name. 
Father God, a release of boldness, Father God, to, to, to break through, to strike the arrows, and, 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 and to penetrate, Lord God, that resistance, Father, that has held them back in their, in their family, held them back in their health, held them back in their finances. Father God, I just thank you for boldness, Lord God, to confront the opposition in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for that boldness, Lord. I thank you for boldness, God, to take that step, Lord, that yes, is where there's been a, a, a fear that has ris risen up. I thank you, Father God, that they will press through the fear, Lord God. They will press through the intimidation. They will press through even the assault of witchcraft in the name of yeah, Jesus, Jesus. To, to press through and to break through, God, into that area you've called them to, uh, to possess, yeah, Father God. God. I thank you, Lord God, that we're not just going to wait to inherit, God. We're going to possess. Lord God, we're going to possess in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for that business breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for that career breakthrough. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for that ability to step away from the old and step into the new. Oh, shine in Jesus' name. Father God, for the, for the, for the uh, breakthrough in ministry, Lord God. Father God, and I, I just in, in over uh, Dan Corbicello and your wife in the, the ministry in, uh, in the ministry in Haiti. Uh, let, let, let me release this. I, I just want to release over you the breakthrough for Haiti in the name of Jesus, because I see God bringing you to a new level of of, of demonstration in the power of the Spirit. It's going to be. I, I see something shifting even in the assignment that God is giving you for that nation and for those people, because now I just see not only you taking teams of people to 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 do construction but and, and, and labor, but I also see amongst that that you're there I, I see in the midst you're gonna be laying down your hammers, you're gonna be laying down your tools, and you're gonna to begin to pick up the word of the Lord, you're gonna to begin to prophesy over the people. You're gonna to begin to release healing over the people. I see a power demonstration that's gonna to begin that's gonna bring breakthrough. Uh, yes, the, the door is already open to you through your skills, but that door is open for you to release the power of God and to release the power of the gospel over Haiti. And I just thank you, Lord, for the breakthrough of finances, for the laborers. The Lord says he's, he's adding laborers to your cause. Hallelujah. And, and because, because he's stirring the hearts of the people to begin to move in power and in boldness and compassion. And there will be those that have the same heart that you have, but with a different skill set. And they're going to complement what God's called you to do perfectly in this new season. Father, I thank you for that breakthrough in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Cindy, I'm just telling you that the apostolic alliance it, 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 it is, is for now. It is for this season. And God says he is bringing partners to you to help you bring in a harvest because it's bigger than you. It's bigger than the gathering. But there's a regional breakthrough that's about to come. And the Lord says, this is the hour that we must begin to beat our 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 shunda hallelujah our plowshares into swords i just see it that there's a oh there a shunda there's a new weaponry and a new equipping that that already has been birthed on the inside of you that's about to be released upon the people and upon the region god says there's a shift that i'm about, uh, that i am bringing to the territory that's going to cause the people of god to arise with boldness and confidence, bold love, and bold confrontation of the enemy. And even the, even the powers of witchcraft and perversion that have reigned over this area that, that have been cemented through greed, the Lord says, I'm breaking the back of Jezebel over this region. And I am breaking the back of, uh, oh, right. of witchcraft and manipulation and whoredoms over this region. For the Lord says, I'm raising up a standard of righteousness in this area that's going to be a, a, a bring forth a glorious demonstration of my power to set the captives free. You're going to see greater uh, evidence of deliverance, not only in the lives of people, but even in the economy, even yeah. in the 
even in the politics, even in the business realm, a new freedom that's going to come forth because I am causing the enemy's back to be broken in this air, in this region, and I am causing the people to arise now with a new spine, <laughs> yeah, and with good. a new back, that's and with good. a new boldness. So arise, O woman of God, and that's know good. that I am anointing you, and I am pouring out a fresh mantle even upon you in this hour. There's a new oil. No, oh, that I'm bringing to you, says the Lord. No longer will you be able to operate in the in the in the anointing of the past season. This is a new anointing, says the Lord. This is a new equipping, and this is a new demonstration. And I say to the people of God that are in this house right now, consider your ways, says the Lord. Consider your ways. Do you want to continue to walk the way the way you've been walking? Do you want to continue to move in the way you've been moving? For the Lord says, I'm calling you to a new place. Yeah. I'm calling you to a new walk. I'm calling you, I'm going to give you a new voice. I want to clothe you with a new glory, says the Lord of hosts. For I am commissioning angelic assignment for those that will align themselves with my purpose and my in my, in my word and my testimony in this hour so know and understand says the lord if you want the new you've got to let go of the old because i'm doing something fresh i'm doing something bold i'm doing something new in this hour and i want to do it in you not only will you do a new thing says the lord you will be the new thing that i am doing in this hour hallelujah Amen. that's good that's really good Ooh, that's good so God, we just thank you. We thank you that you've released a new thing over us. And, and God, I'm just, I'm just uh, agreeing with every person here, every, every prophetic strike that they made, we're, we're coming to an agreement to the new territory that you are giving them, that they are taking the territory for the kingdom that is set before them. And not even, uh, what I see is it's not even just right in front of them. There's a stretch that the Lord is going to do. He's going to stretch you just when you think, okay, I've got this. I can step into this new territory. As soon as you step, he's going to stretch you to the next. He's going to stretch you to the next. Don't get comfortable because he's going to keep moving you forward because the kingdom of God is at hand. And he is moving the kingdom forward for all those that are willing to be stretched into that next arena. It's not comfortable. You're not going to know exactly what it's going to look like. But it doesn't matter because the king of glory is taking you to places that you never thought you could go. And I just know that uh, the Lord has told me it is time for financial fullness. When you're full... That means you've got more than enough. You've probably eaten a little bit more than you should. And God wants us to uh, taste and see the goodness of this financial fullness. Because he's going to provide what you need to step into where he's taking you. And uh, he, it may not be there as you step. But as your foot lands, the fullness will be there. So, so go with courage and know that everywhere he takes you, he will provide for you. And that he is expanding his territory through this financial fullness. Yeah. So, Lord, we just thank you for your word, for your power, for your breakthrough. We thank you for the authority we have to declare a thing and it is established for us. God, we thank you that your word says that it will never fall void to the ground, that it will go forth, it will produce, it will reproduce, it will move forward, it will never be still. So thank you that your word lives in us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I just see a sonic boom coming across us that will shake us. It will uh, unearth the things in us that don't align with his spirit. And it will, uh, gosh, oh, what is it? It will pro send us forward, uh, like uh, project us forward 
So God, just continue to boom around us, boom in us. <laughs> Let us just be the boom for you, God. And we just thank you, Lord, and we bless and honor you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we may get Noah to cut that word and pop, pop it up on the uh, website for us, right, Noah? Yes. Uh, yeah, the word of genes. Yeah. From there to the end. Okay, guys, thank you so much. We're gonna, we'll put the word up on the, on the website so you can listen to it again. And I just pray that you have a great week. If you'd like prayer, you can come up for prayer. And uh, we're going to do some setting up real quick for next week's seventh anniversary. So if you can hang around, help us set up for a second. And have a great week. Amen. <laughs>